Hey guys, Tom here. If you remember from the summer project tour, one of the big ones I had to do was reparge the side of this house. It was just flaking off, peeling off, and I really wanted to get it taken care of. So today on the Homecraft Chronicles, I'm gonna show you what I did to get this project taken care of. Stick around. So we started out by clearing away the mulch from the bottom of the wall and then we went behind and dug a little trench. We wanted to make sure that after we were done and had it backfilled that the, the new parging was way down below the grade level so it just was a better finished product at the end. Lisa went along and scraped out the mulch, I dug the trench and then she went behind me again and just cleaned everything up. Next was the real hard part, chipping off the old parging. There was a layer of paint on top of there and I didn't want to take a chance of anything not sticking so we just went along and just chipped everything off down to the bare foundation. Now this was a thankless task. We tried everything, flat bars, scrapers, pry bars, hammers, chisels, grinders, and geez I don't know what else. but. We just went along, chipped along the siding line on the top, popped everything off we could think of, or that we could, not everything we could think of, we popped off everything. Um, some sections were easier than others, some, like right in here, it was just a total pain. But after a good probably three, four hours of work at it, over the course of a couple of days, we got it all off. thing we had to do was repairs. Uh, as part of the chipping process, we discovered some voids in the block, some places where the uh, mortar between the blocks came out, some cracks, so we had to repair that. I just uh, took a brush with some water and wet the patches because I wanted to make sure that the cement could cure and dry before the dry block around it leached out all the water. Now this is just some Mason's mix that I that I mixed up to the, about the consistency of peanut butter. And then I just took my trowel and worked it into all the voids. This did not have to be pretty. This was not the finished coat. So I just wanted to make sure I got it packed into the voids and the cracks and the empty spaces and just made sure everything was structurally tied back together with no spaces or gaps, so we'd get a good finished product at the end. See, I just filled it in and smoothed it out, nothing fancy. So now is the part where we mixed up the parging. This is just quick creep surface bonding cement, and then I added the acrylic uh, latex bonding agent and fortifier. Fortunately for me, my neighbor had a small electric barrel mixer that I used to whip this all together. This was so much easier than having to do it by hand in a pan. I wanted the mix to be about the consistency between like mayonnaise and peanut butter I ended up using about like two-thirds of the bag of mix and then probably two or three quarts of water and additive mixed together until I got the right consistency and then again I wet down the wall just to give the uh, parging stuff a little something to stick to without sucking all the moisture out into the wall again and then it's just putting it on. I'm not worried about fancy right now. I just wanted to get coverage, spread it on the wall with a trowel, just picked up scoops of it onto the trowel, spread it on. A lot of it fell off, but hey, that's the price of doing business, I guess. So I just spread it on. I'm going probably about a quarter to 316 thick. 
the goal was to get it on, smooth it out, let it dry, and then go back and put another thin coat on to smooth it out. You know, like a finished, better looking coat, but you'll see at the end it didn't quite work out that way. Um, when I was putting it on, it, in the beginning, it wasn't as easy as it went along. You know, you kind of have to get the hang of this kind of thing. I have not done masonry work probably in 25 or 30 years since I worked at a uh, swimming pool company in my youth. So I was way out of practice. But as you can see, I, you know, you get the hang of it pretty quickly. And after I put a little bit on, I let it go. And then I would go back and try to smooth it out somewhat with a thin trowel. Now, I did this, I kind of gave up on this pretty quickly because it just wasn't working out the way I had hoped. I decided it was much better. I went back, I just grabbed a big brush with some water and I just smoothed it out that way. That knocked the, the high edges off, the little inconsistencies, the swirls, and it just kind of evened it out a lot better than trying to do it with the trowel because that takes a little bit of finesse and I just didn't have it. But this worked out well. As you'll see, I would just put some on, put a section of the mix on the wall, spread it out, and after, you know, maybe two or three feet, then it would go back to the previous section because it had set up enough that I could then take my brush and smooth it out, knock, knocking it down like I had done previously that you saw. So I just did that the entire way down the wall, spread it out, smooth it, go back, smooth out the previous section, and then I'd have to stop every once, once in a while to mix up a new batch of mix. So this whole process took me probably about, probably a couple of hours, two, two and a half hours, three hours maybe, to do the whole wall. Now this is the only section that requires a little bit of uh, finesse, as I would say, because you have the wooden window frame there that you didn't want to glop it up on the window frame because that would look junky. And down on the bottom, it was angled and you wanted to make sure you kept that section angled because you want to make sure that you have it so when the rainwater comes down, it's going to shed off that window and not build up there to rot out that window frame or worse yet, back up and get into the house. And also you'll see up in the top corner, like along the edges of where that corner is, you'll see a bunch of like uh, hairy looking stuff. And all that is, is the fiberglass fibers in the mix. And that's what holds the, the surface bonding cement together, it gives it structure and strength and kind of keeps everything intertwined and uh, makes it work. And that wasn't really a problem because after the wall dried, I just went back with my hand. Those little hairs dried up and they came right off and it worked great. So as you can see, this was not a simple project, but I think it turned out well. Obviously from the growth of the plants, you can tell that we did it a while ago, but we got it taken care of. And is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but I would like to do another coat, but just the growth of the plants wouldn't allow us to do that. Plus I have four more sides of the house I gotta do. Is this the perfect tutorial? Probably not because I've never done this before, but it's 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 not a difficult project. I'll be honest with you. You are going to work like a dog on this project. It is backbreaking. It is labor intensive. Are there other ways to do it that might be easier? Who knows? Could be. I, I'm not a professional mason, but this is just the way that I did it and the way that was best for me to do it. So it turned out well, and we're really pleased with it. If you got something out of this project and you like this kind of thing and it helped you realize that you can undertake a project just like this, please subscribe to the Homecraft Chronicles. I got happy hour home improvement, DIY, 
anything else I can think of to help you get the most out of your home and enjoy living in your home. And make sure you hit the bell. That way when something new comes along, you'll be notified and you can catch it right away. So that's it for me. Uh, I'm on to the next one. So until I see you next time, remember, take care of yourself and your home. I'll see you soon.